Hey guys, it's me, Eody Gaming here, and let's talk about some of the community comments for Power Creep in Honkai Star Rail. Some of the concerns that you have as well for this video that we posted out. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil you on whatever it is. If you haven't checked out, do check it out. It's pretty decent as well, I think, in my opinion. Let me know as well in the comments what you think. But more importantly, let's sort by the top few comments and I want to answer the key questions that you guys have voted on. I thank you guys so much for all the very, very nice comments. I heart them when I can see them. Really, I really, really appreciate it. But let's talk about some of the questions that you guys have relating to the game and some meta in this video. The power creep, and this. let's start off with the first one here. Marion Odidio. The power creep resistant move is to get early support Eidolons. Robin E1, Sparkle E2, Rami E1, and you don't need to care about much else. What are my thoughts for this? Generally, I think this is a pretty solid move. Supports work much better and last for a longer period of time. They generally do a lot better and their E1 and E2, especially if you can play this unit into multiple teams, you bring a very strong character everywhere and that is very, very solid. The problem, and you guys knew there was gonna be a catch. The problem with this is one, you need to figure out what character is good. And secondly, even if you find a character is good, you need to understand the flaws of that unit. Even a character who is quote-unquote as perfect as Ranmei also has uh, times that she's not very useful. One of the examples is if you break enemies, they can't move, means that DOT is not going to work. DOT style doesn't really like that kind of team composition too much. Um, that is one of the examples of downsides. There are very little for a character like Ranmei, but I want to just give you an extreme example of something that can happen. If you double down all your eggs in one basket, you spend like six months worth of saving on one unit, and maybe you find out you are a true blue Kafka lover and you like DOT too much over the moon, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a negative effect on your whole playstyle. But generally speaking, getting early support Eidolons, if you can get the right ones, your account will be in very, very good stead. The challenge of course is finding the right ones. It becomes a bit of a coin flip or you need to do enough research and watch enough videos by the community. Many other strong content creators out there as well who've done very, very good content. You can check it out. We also share thoughts on the channel as well, which I think you will find very, very helpful too to make your decision. I can't make decision for you. I can only give you my honest thoughts and that's what we try to do on this channel. Next question or next comment that we have by Ezio, which is getting like 131 upvotes as well. So let's take a look at his question. I'm kind of scared about Akron's situation Two to three patches after Fae Xiao's release, really feel like her damage will be much lower. Seems like a very power creep related concern. Game being quite expensive, need three limited characters. These are very valid concerns that you guys have. I think this is super, super huge. Because if your main DPS that you just pulled like what, three months ago, four months ago, is getting power crap. Black Swan just came out like six, about six months ago. So Akron was probably like five-ish, four months. You probably don't even have time to pull for a next character's E1 or their character plus signature if you are a free to play player. This is a huge concern. My opinion about this is Honkai Star is never going to alienate the majority of the player base too early. They definitely would space it out, take some time. Akron might not be like immediately power crap, but she might be not as attractive as Fei Xiao. She goes down like one tier, not as attractive. Maybe, I'm just guessing right now, we don't have official information, so I can only promise you or describe to you possibilities in the game right now. Don't want to get copyright strike for leaks or anything. Bear with me for that. But uh, anyways, if Akron is go drops down one tier and face Hell is like number one, maybe it will take like another new spanking DPS that comes out later on to like push everything down like one ladder lower. In that case, you probably have like eight months, nine months. And I think that's a pretty reasonable gate, right? If you take eight, nine months for your flashy character that you love a lot, who was once meta to slowly be out of meta, at least whoever still can earn some money. So in that case, I think it's okay. The other reason why you're finding it so expensive, I think, and why the community is also finding it very expensive is every new character that comes out seems to buff like the current guys on top or they're trying to sell you a new style that you are worried that it's going to pivot into. These are very valid concerns. Do you extend the lifespan of your current favorite character who you have invested so much in or do you hitch your bet and try to get a new one to pull? This is a very, very tricky situation and I totally understand why you guys are feeling that it's getting very expensive. There are many ways of playing the game we talked about in our video of horizontal account where you build as many teams as you can, many different um, DPS characters as you can versus the vertical road where you double down on a certain style and you make that style work as long as you can. If you are interested in more of such comparisons, it's beyond the point of this video, but check that video out because it's more of a philosophy of playing style and it might help you. Every person's philosophy of gaming is very different. Everyone has different personalities. Check that video out if you're interested in terms of figuring out what style suits best for your personality. 
So thank you again so much for raising this point, uh, Ezio. Very nice comments again here and there. Uh, Aventurine is good. He also makes the game on easy mode. Um, Aventurine is also very strong. I think he's definitely one of the top sustains in the game right now. Very, very good as well. It's maybe perhaps not my personal picks in general, but um, I can understand why he's super strong. If there's another question asking me why, I will explain more on that in a bit. Um, investing in Kafka, Black Swan, best thing you have ever done. Very solid characters, but unfortunately, um, and this is where I want to add in a bit of commentary by Moth Grinder here, the question. Kafka and Black Swan are great characters by nature. Unfortunately, the current game state doesn't do them too much justice. The only reason why they are working a lot now is because Debas are okay still, and they can be played with Akron in a Akron DOT team. Those are the only two things that we have going for them. DOT current game state is actually quite meek, meek, bleak. Um, not that great. If you're interested in more DOT, you're a DOT lover, we just put out a video on DOT teams. Are they worth it and will they actually get better, especially if they have a rerun coming up? Um, you probably will be interested in that. But Kafka Black Swan, I like those two characters personally as well, but I understand the flaws in the DOT team composition right now. Next up. Um, this is also a super popular one. 121 uh, uh, likes already by ZRH1988. Sustained power crit is difficult to pull off from a game design's perspective because having more healing is going to be an overkill. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty good point. I just want to focus on the main part here so we can get as many representative opinions as we can in this video. Sustained power creep is harder than DPS power creep because of the fundamental uh, law of personality and demand and supply that most of us gamers want to see bigger damage numbers rather than having the bigger sustain. And we only have a set amount of HP bar to heal, whereas our damage can be infinite. So two things that work in favor of sustain characters, but sustain characters are still not immune and they are actually quite easy to power creep. What do I mean? Game developers, how do you screw up shielding characters? Uh, Aventurine, Japart, and etc. The Shielders, March 7th, uh, Preservation. All you just need to do is have some kind of shield negate. You sh shred the buffs of all your teammates and boom, shield gone. Another way, corrosion effect like Genshin Impact. There are some monsters that were introduced because Zhongli's shield was getting a little bit too strong. They introduced like, some monsters to like, try to balance it out a bit. Um, they penetrate through shield and you still lose life. Imagine like playing Jing Liu and she just saps your whole team when you have inventory on it, then your whole team is like 10% HP, even though you have this massive chunky shield. If anything penetrates through that, that will do. So sustained power creep is still possible. It's just, is there incentive for them to do it? Is there a reason for them to do it? Generally, the answer is no, because sustained to begin with doesn't sell very well. So I just want to clarify this power creep fundamental. It is very easy for them to power creep it. It's very easy for them to put something in um, and then sell you another solution later on. For example, a shield that also heals you as the time goes by. Very easy to do that, but is there monetary incentive for Coivers? And to be really honest, I'd rather just like keep selling, uh, spanking new DPS characters. Makes me like my wallet fat as shit, rather than just having to just keep uh, trying to find ways to like, outsmart the community, right? So that is one of the reasons, my perspective from a design perspective, it is still uh, very possible. Next up, we have the hot wind blowing. The top one least, the character least resistant to power creep has to be Blade. Now this, it has 84 upvotes. I want to share with you my perspective. I understand that Blade is not too attractive right now in the game, but one, two things that you need to consider. What is Blade's team compositions that he plays well in? Blade is a HP DK character. If you remember our eight styles of Honkai Star Rail, the different ones, he's a HP DK character. He's a follow-up counter base. The faster the enemy moves, the better he acts. If the enemy applies debuffs on Blade like DOT, he acts super fast. And at the same time, he's also playing into team compositions that um, perhaps want to have other characters that synergize with like, HP sapping in his overall team. Two main styles really, like HP DK as well as a follow-up attack encounter. I have like a mental blockage right now, but let's talk about those two right now. I'm doing this just off the fly, so don't mind me. So Blade, HP Decay, team compositions, as well as follow-up counter style. These two styles are super unpopular. What are the other popular characters in these two styles right now? HP Decay, maybe Jade, maybe Ting Liu. That's all. Both of them, irrelevant. Or, you're not irrelevant. I don't mean to be rude to any of you, but are less popular in the game right now for the meta's sake. Follow-up counter, Yun Li. There are no fast-moving enemies or very, very... Um, good situations for that and that is why Blade is just not too popular. Does it mean a, a counterpart like Ting Liu is weak? 
No, because it's just ice is not as rampant in the game right now. Blade, similarly, we don't have too many enemies very strong against wind. In fact, we don't even have a very, very good wind breaker or like wind breaker like jacket. But wind um, person who erodes the weakness bar. If you think about it, Sampo is probably like best to weakness break enemies in wind. That is why they are probably going to introduce a character wind like Fei Xiao so they can start like shifting it in. And if wind is starting to become the flavor of Man and maybe there are faster moving enemies, Blade suddenly doesn't seem too unattractive anymore and that might be something that's going to happen. So I'll be I'll be a bit um, reluctant to say he's the worst or least resistant because don't be fooled by the current circumstance. It can change very, very quickly. Uh, a lot of other wonderful things and CoPC, mem one year member of the channel already. Wonderful thing. Thank you so much for supporting us for one year. Um, you can just join as a member of the channel and support us with just like a dollar a month. It will really go a long way really appreciate it. and it helps fun like giveaways back to the community as well so if you appreciate our content i hope you do support us as well if you can if you can't totally understand watching this video liking it is good enough and it means a lot to me already next up um we have misfit gi characters are getting power crap more often than in genshin impact um talking about honkai staro while kazuha and hutao two characters who were introduced like super early on haven't gotten power crap it's quite insane so here you are comparing between two different games altogether genshin impact's game sells not only based on like turn-based combat how much you can clear the people who play genshin impact come from many different walks of life so think about the monetization focus again how many people actually want to beat like the end game content in genshin it's more of like a lifestyle game to a lot of people that's why there's such a huge community Probably hardcore gamers only make like players who care about meta, watch in-depth videos on characters, make up a fraction of the population. Versus a turn-based games, there tend to be more people who are more involved because other than story, other than lore, there's not much exploration. Everything else is turn-based combat and strategizing in a turn-based game. Whereas in an open world game like Genshin Impact, there's so many other things you can do many ways that can sell you a character, mobility, flashy design because you can walk around the characters. Very, very different thing. And that is why um, Honkai Star has a little bit more steeper power creep because there's more characters to every patch that's coming in um, compared to Genshin. So under helping you understand like bigger picture of why games are like that. And that's also the reason why we get a lot of free pulls in Honkai Star because the developers know if the whole community is like broke, dead broke, no pulls, no one's going to enjoy the game. That's why they try to give a bit more free pulls so that they can try to maintain some enthusiasm as well. So that is a question for Misfit GI. Thank you so much for, for posing this and commenting. 87 likes. Um, we are of course not going by likes. Whatever YouTube thinks is people are going to be um, wanting to hear it. We'll also be commenting. And I can't comment everything. So I'll try to do my best. Early comments, of course, tend to be pushed up a little bit more. So make sure you guys have notification bells turned on. And like and comment this video if you're finding it helpful so far. Uh, you just like to know my thoughts on what the comments are. I try to like reply to everyone in this kind of format, new format, maybe going forward as well. I would say the real issue, beside Power Creep, this is by MHIX, is how they shift content to accommodate it and literally ditching it uh, next update in the most chaotic way possible. I think that this is not quite true because if you notice, if you look at the big overall arcing style, the main styles that have been in play were like Break, were like Follow Up, and they have been kind of true to it for the, the past six months. DOT, Break, Follow Up, these were like the three main team composition styles that have been going, and they didn't really like shift content to accommodate and then they ditch it in the next update. It's a good six months, which is half a year if you think about it. Black Swan was out six months ago, almost like six months ago, massive amount of changes. So we have been in like a similar gain state for six months, and maybe it's time for a change. If not, you guys will just get bored, right? One year playing same characters, unger bungering with your Akron, it might get a little bit boring. So. Power creep, yes, new shifting new content, but it's not as if they kick you out of the meta. It just merely rotates in a cycle. One day, characters that are not popular might come back, especially if suitable. And we see that a little bit with Zeela, especially when there are more quantum weakness enemies for her to do her thing, especially in the game mode now with Pure Fiction, March 7, pretty strong combination between both of them. So that is my thoughts for MHIX. Thank you again for the question. Um, Ta Tayana? Uh, 2954. This is the question that I guess a lot of people are wondering. So in the video, top five, one of the spoilers here apparently is I pick Fushen over Adventure and it's one of my top five picks. And let me explain why. I'm sure you guys are quite interested. The issue with Adventure, he's a very strong character. Don't get me wrong. In fact, I would rank him as number one right now in the current game. But again, we are looking at the current game state. The problem with Adventure is he's not only a support defensive unit, he also adds weakness breaking by damaging enemies and also doing some damage. What this means is he's subjected to hybrid power creep of a DPS kind of thing in nature 
as well as a support issue. By being a DPSC in nature, which means that if the enemy is not like, Im like very, very resistant to imaginary or do not have imaginary resistance, why then do you need an imaginary character that deals that, that his follow-up damage and stuff like that, unless you're playing to specific teams? If it switches to quantum weakness, clearly the meta will shift to slightly flavor quantum flavor, favor quantum DP uh, support characters that can do a bit more rather than adventuring. Um, that is the changing meta style. Other than that, of course, is he currently works well in a team compositions that are very favorable. Follow-up team compositions, he has just been recently released, and he doesn't have a very long track record. If you are, like, you're picking, like, imagine you're betting on, like, something like, which team is going to win the Grand Tournament Finals in some kind of League of Legends Dota, you want teams that have track record. Yes, new fancy teams might win one or two tournaments, but if you have a longer track record of experienced players, they tend to have a higher chance of maybe not winning the tournament because people know their style, but at least coming in top two and three. And our objective here is not to pick the winners. We just want two and three, two and three, two and three, because they two and three for a very long period of time. And that is the objective. Fu Shen has a long track record to back her up, which as a, I like to think of myself as an opinion advisor kind of person here, I want to give you guys the path of least resistance, the lower risk, and that's why I choose a character who has a better track record, a longer period of time, and it just simply doesn't play into the same risk factors that Aventry has, and that is my honest opinion for you guys as well. Um, feel free to disagree. I am very open to disagreeing. That's why I am answering these questions in a very um, natural way. I'm not even scripting this. I'm talking off the top of my head. I'm still quite uncomfortable with camera. This is my like seventh time filming here. Um, I'm counting. That's how little it is, right? So next up, nobody can power creep Lotta in my heart by uh, Petals on the Moon. Um, as long as you like a character, that's right, you can always play him. But I see a lot of jokes online that saying Lotta is a bad character. Again, it's a current game state kind of thing. Lotta, when does he outperform? He outperforms when the enemy deals damage over time. They slowly set your HP down or you have counter mechanic teams and a character that practically uses no skill, very little skill points or no skill points to heal. That is Lotta's very, very strong points. Or like stripping enemy bars by using his out and then slamming down them. He cleanses. Um, these characters, or Lotta outperforms with team compositions with characters like Yunli, with Blade, who are not flavor of the month. So it's no doubt. No, chop, chop, here, saying something wrong. But uh, no doubt that Lotta, of course, is not very, very popular right now because of the certain secret situations that he's in. But if we go into a counter meta, you go into a maybe enemy DOT meta, Lotta could see a little bit more fla uh, flavor and then he won't just be in your heart, he'll be in your team compositions and doing well too. Um, Aventurine and Tell Tio seem you approve. Very nice, very strong. I won't comment too much on that. Um, NSVAR says, I would say Robin too. Strong buffs and best in slot in most teams, except Brick. 100% action advance for the entire team is invaluable and you'll see the strength of future units. Yes, I think Robin is like super, super strong. Um, she definitely is one of the best units buffers, especially in the current game state. And I, no one can disagree on that. A, a bit of a spoiler here, but I didn't choose Robin and instead I chose a character like Fu Shen. I didn't want the whole top tier to be like flooded with how many characters because that adds no value to you guys at all. I want it to be a bit more diverse so they can make decision making. But I think Robin is also very strong. 100% action advance is very, very good as well. The reason why I chose Ranmei over Robin is just because Ranmei plays into a little bit more styles and she plays into Brick, which is a very, very strong team combination which has access to Harmony MC and that's a very cheap alternative. For the fact that it's cheap, she can do a lot fit into many team compositions, um, a little bit more than Robin, I would say. Of course, Robin is very flexible on her own. These two reasons give me enough comfort to rank her slightly higher, as well as having a slightly better track record in the past and my experience with the particular character as well. Robin is a slightly newer character, which again is slightly higher risk because there's less track record. Things can go wrong if meta shifts. Robin has already been subjected to maybe a few changing team compositions and uh, memory of chaos, apocalyptic shadow, rotating buffs. So there's a bit more data to be seen. That's why um, Ranmei was a little bit higher than Robin too, but I don't disagree. Strong character as well. Next up, we have Omega6826. This is 119 likes as well. The power creep in this game is like one of the things the community seems to really brush off. You can e easily clear stuff with like E2S1 of your limited characters and meta goes so fast, your one, your phase one characters like Zilla and stuff can barely compete unless they have super high investments. Um, some try to brush it off like look at YouTube only four star only clears, but they have very high investment. This is a post or comment which makes a lot of sense to me. 
Um, there are many flashy videos on YouTube saying like four-star clears and stuff, but it's true. They have very, very high investment. They are likely players who have multiple, like maybe even limited or damn good gear. They refresh on their account or like every crit damage roll into everything and then they slot it on. So it might not be very representative for the average player. It might look like a free character, but at the end of the day, the gear, the relics that you have on your account might be a bit different. So that's one of the things that he mentioned. But I think it's a very solid point by Omega. I think it's very good. Power Cream in this game, very easy to brush off. Your meta goes very fast. I just want to give you some encouragement here, Omega, and the 119 people who agree with him. Power Creep in this game is very unique in Hoyoverse games. They tend to rotate around a circle rather than like this one here, gone, eliminated from the meta, totally gone. If you realize, they haven't really released another quantum hunt character that competes directly with Sealer. The other quantum DPS they recently released was, I don't know, Jade, who is quantum... Um, uh, erudition. What that means, it tells you that the, the I will almost say government, the Hoyoverse developers know that they are actually trying to spread out their resources and try to let, help people build multiple teams around the same element before doubling down on the same one. So I like to use like a, a quote like, every dog has his day, except maybe some characters, Arlen, I guess. But then again, it's not his meta and Yen Ting, not Ice meta as well. So I'll give them a break for that. But at the end of the day, every dog will have his day one day. And that's the mantra, or at least of limited characters that Hoeverse tries to do. So Power Creep might fail, like they are gone, but in essence, they are just rotated out of the meta and they might come back in the next time. The main cause for concern is when they come back in the next time, is there a better DPS that does the same job? And for now, even that duration is a bit short for us to actually see someone that has directly Power Creep. Of course, I can be missing something because there's like so many different team comms combinations of characters right now that I might be missing out on. Uh, leave me in the comments below, especially if you guys have other thoughts. I love to hear them as well. I love to read all your comments too. Um, let's try to answer a few more for this video. I don't want to be like a, a one hour long video. I'll try to get as many as I can so that I can answer as many of your burning questions since you guys helped me with watching the video so much that um, it's doing so well in this video. So I just want to try to give back in my direct way that I can. So from heart for your soul, and thank you guys so much again for very nice comments. I am not intentionally missing out. I actually heart them, I read them. But in this video, I just want to be specific, more meta and like game related so that I can help as many people as I can who are a little bit lost and unhappy with the whole power creep situation. Uh, Luota has the highest healing amount. Ho Ho has the most off offensive sustain. Fushan reduces the damage the most. They all have widely different unique mechanics and benefits. Um, from heart for your soul, this is, he is like super woke. He, you got it pretty much right. Every character is very different. Every character has their niche. And one niche might be more useful in other situations than not. And I think the most important thing is every sustain that you pick will have its day. In my opinion, you can make do with one or two. Some say Gallagher is good enough to replace some of them. Um, and even maybe new sustained characters until they have like three teams, four teams, five teams required in the memory of chaos, apocalyptic shadow, then maybe we might, might need more. Um, but then they will always be selling you more of them in future as well if they re raise the requirements. So from heart for your soul, very right. Everyone is, every character has its purpose and the one that has the most purpose and the video, the aims of the video of power creep that we do is the ones that can stand that rotation as much as you can so that you don't the worst part about it is having a character that you put on the bench for a very long period of the time. And yes, they might come back someday, but you could have much better used that resources for a character who was more active in your active team composition. That is the point of talking about characters in Power Creep videos um, in general. So um, very nice. I, I, I guess this is because this was like one day ago, so I might miss it out. Thank you guys so much that not skipping my videos. Really appreciate it. Very, very uh, strong. Another um, point here, and I think let's end off with this one. Um, game Camp PH. I think we're going to the summon meta soon. Um, interesting thought, summon meta where you have many, many different characters. This is not power creep related, but I think we are definitely in a changing meta as well. And my, no, I don't personally think it's summon meta. I think the meta is going to be shifting into one main thing, faster moving enemies, and probably we are going to have a style change. What that style change, I'll give you a hint, it might be DOT. So I want you to click on this video right here to understand, is DOT actually worth it to build? Can you actually do it without every limited characters? And anyways, guys, if you found this video helpful, do like, comment, and subscribe. Share with any friends who might have burning desire for understanding power creep better in Honkai Star Rail. And thank you guys again so much for watching. See you in the next video.